Hello and welcome back to this next example here. We're looking at um, a goodness of fit test to determine whether or not the data appears to be normally distributed or, or follows a, a normal uh, distribution. So here we've got a simple random sample of 30 grades from a micro econ course. Uh, they've been sorted from actually smallest to largest just for convenience. That will make our, our work a little bit faster. Uh, the mean grade here is 61 with a standard deviation of uh, 0.17. So our null and alternative hypotheses, I'm just going to keep it brief that this is, uh, oops, if I can spell properly, this is uh, normally distributed with the mean of 61 and a standard deviation of 17. And the alternative, uh, it is not. It is not normally distributed with mean 0.61 and standard deviation 17. Okay, so there's the, the null and alternative hypotheses for part A. Part B, compute the expected frequencies uh, and test statistic. Uh, so here we actually have to compute the expected frequencies and the, the actual frequencies. Now, we have a, a requirement that we have to have a, a minimum uh, of five uh, observations in each probability interval. So what this means, here I've got 30 observations. Uh, my expected frequency has to be no less than five. So given that I have 30 observations, uh, 30 divided by six gives us five. So I can split my 30 observations into six categories. So if I just divide here, here, and here. So here now I have six different categories. Each one has five observations uh, in them. Now, if this is normally distributed, we can define our equal probability intervals around this mean of 0 0.61. And we now need to define what are the, what's the magnitude of these probability intervals. So we have to figure out now, if we split this up, if it is normally distributed, we need to now identify what are those corresponding values that would correspond with having five observations here, five here, five here, five here, five here, and five here. So again, we're always doing these tests under the, uh, under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true. So if it is true, what would be those corresponding values that would divide that normally distributed population uh, here into these six different equal probability uh, intervals? So what we have to do, well, the area under this normal distribution we know is equal to one. So if the area is equal to one, and we're dividing that into six different regions. So one divided by six, this will give us, let me just get my calculator here so we can do this. This will give us one divided by six probability. So each of the areas under that curve would be equal to 0.167. So this area here is 0.167 and this area in between is 0.167 and so on all the way across to the other side. So each of those probability intervals uh, is equal to 0.167. So now with that, now we have to find what would be those corresponding uh, values. So <clears throat> what we need to do, we'll pull up our Z tables and we'll look up, first of all, how can we calculate this value here? Well, this is going to be 0 0.61 minus some value we'll pick up from our z table, some critical value, times the standard deviation 0.17. So how do we get that critical value? Well, it's going to be the critical value that corresponds with the probability of 0.167 in that lower tail. So here if I pull up our z tables, uh, the closest I guess we can get is right here. 0.166, this gives us a value of negative nine, uh, negative 0.97. So coming back to our table, this is negative 0.97. So that now corresponds with a value of 0.61 minus 0.97 times 0.17. 
So 0.44, let's call it 0.45. So that means that this value is 0 0.045. So that means that we should have five observations. If it is normally distributed, we should have five observations that are less than or equal to 0.45. Now we'll find this next one, which is going to be this similar calculation, 0.61 minus some critical value times 0.17. But now that critical value has to correspond to a probability of 0.167 plus 0.167 because both of these areas here and here are equal to 0.167. So that's going to be around 0.33. We might have to uh, we might have to ballpark it a little bit here. Let's see what we can find. Around 0.33 It'll be probably closer to this one, 0.3336. So that gives us negative 0.43 as that corresponding critical value. So I'll just plug this in here, 0.43, and now get our calculator out. Oops, there we go. And so I have 0.61 minus 0.43 times 0.17, and that gives me, let's call it 0 0.54, 0 0.54. Okay, now we do the same thing for the upper two values, and the corresponding critical values are going to be the same, because the, the upper tail critical value that corresponds to an area of 0 0.167, this distribution is symmetric, so that's going to be uh, calculated precisely the same. So here, this is going to be 0.61, except now it's plus that same value, 0.97 times 0.17. Grab that calculator again. So 0.61 plus 0.97 times 0.17. So 0.77, that'll round to, I guess, 0 0.78. 0 0.78. And finally, that last one, this one is going to be the same, 0.61 plus, now our critical value is 0.43 times 0 0.17, 0 0.68. Okay, so now we have all of our values for our probability interval. So what this means is that if the null hypothesis is true, we would expect to have five observations fall within each of these six intervals. Okay, so let's see what we what we come up with. If we look at values less than uh, less than 0.45 in our data set here, I've got these four values here. Values between 0.54 and 0.5. Uh, 0.45 and 0.54, so that's going to be, oh, I'll even have this one up here, so let's go like this, including that endpoint. The next one is between 5.4 and 6.1, so that's going to be right here. 0.61 and 6.8, so that's going to be these ones. And between 6.8 and 78, that'll be right here. And, be, and anything greater than 0.78, well, that's what we have right here now. Okay, so we've got now all of our actual, uh, all of our observed values, our actual frequencies. So now what we want to do here, we're getting, we're getting up now to calculating our test statistic. So here what we need, that test statistic, we're looking at the sum of the square differences between the observed frequencies, the expected frequencies, divided by, and this summation actually carries through the whole, uh, the whole ratio. So our expected frequencies, well, we would have here, I've got six categories, we would expect there to be five observations, five, 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 in each of those six observations, uh, sorry, six intervals, our actual uh, frequencies, well now if we look at our, our little red circles here, I've got four in the first one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the second one, 
I have one, two, three, four in the third, four in the fourth, one, two, three, four, five, six, and finally one, two, three, four, five. So I'm just counting the number of observations in each of those red, uh, call it a circle, it's not really a circle, but I, you know what I mean. And now we look at those differences between our observed values and our expected values. So this is just going to be minus one, two, minus one, minus one, one, and zero. And now we need to look at this value, this difference squared over the expected value of five. Oh, I'm gonna run out of room here. Let me just scroll down a little bit. <clears throat> okay, so now we have, this is going to be one over five. Let me make some space here. This is getting so cluttered. Fi minus ei squared over ei. So I have one, so one, negative one squared is one over five. Two squared is four over five. Negative one squared is one over five, one over five, one over five, and finally zero. So there's all of our uh, individual values. Now we just have to add all of those up. We apply the summation and let's see what we get. So I don't really have a fraction on this silly calculator. One divided by five equals, and I have one, two, three, four of those. So I'm just gonna say times four, cause I got four, one fifth, plus uh, four over five. So here that gives me now a test statistic of 1.6. And this is our chi-squared test statistic. Now what do we do with our chi-squared test statistic? Well, we need to know our degrees of freedom for this distribution. Degrees of freedom, k minus p minus one. k is the number of categories. Here we have six categories that we're using. I have one, two, three, four, five, and six categories. P is the number of estimated uh, parameters of the population. And here we're estimating two, if I scroll back up, we're estimating a mean and a standard deviation. So our degrees of freedom, here I have six categories. We're estimating two parameters minus one, so we have three degrees of freedom. So now if we go to our chi-squared distribution, three degrees of freedom, our test statistic was 1.6. So if we come along here, 1.6, well, it's somewhere in between these two. So our p-value is somewhere in here. So somewhere between 0.1 and 0.9. So our p-value I know is greater than 0 0.1. Now we didn't specify level of significance, Ooh, my bad. We can do this any reasonable level of significance, 0 0.5, 0 0.05, even if we did this at the 0 0.01 level of significance uh, with a p-value equal to something greater than 0 0.1, we clearly do not have uh, sufficient evidence to reject our null hypotheses. So without having sufficient evidence to reject our null hypotheses, it means we're unable to say that it's not normally distributed. So again, I kind of choose my words carefully rather than saying it is normally distributed. Uh, all we're saying here, I'm unable to say that it is not normally distributed. Okay, so that's all there is to it. We've got our, we did our p-value approach. And our conclusion is to say that, for all intents and purposes, I'm not unable to say the evidence does not allow me to state that it is not normally distributed. So we can say it is normally distributed, but you know that whole type two error problem arises as soon as we say that. So we're good. Uh, we failed to reject 
we cannot say that it is not normally distributed. Okay, I'm saying that repeatedly because I know it sounds a little bit confusing. But in any case, I hope that all that all makes sense. Thank you for watching. Uh, we'll do one more exercise on this topic. Okay, thanks. Bye bye.